Right guys, uh, what's on the menu? We've got a whole sense of replacement on a 1000 watt direct hub motor. I think it's Volumat. Uh, the markings have been completely wiped off it. Uh, I tested it with 5 volts running through the hall lines. I'll show you all that in a minute. Uh, come up with just the yellow hall sensor. Customers on a budget, they don't really want to spend the money to have the motor completely redone, as in the bearings, um, three hall sensors and a new cable. They just want it working going down the road, so basically one hall sensor. Um, that's enough to get it working. Surprisingly, despite what it looks like on the outside, let me just change the camera. Um, yeah, completely battered on the outside. Um, I basically just took the core out, involves in doing the bolts, taking the wheel off, taking the five, uh, sorry, it's late at night, taking the three mil Allen bolts out all the way around, just popping the core out. But despite the looks on the outside, the inside is actually very clean, which I was surprised about. Um, cleaner than my hands are right now. These are all sensors, in case you don't know. We'll go over them, how they work shortly. Um, but we're replacing these. Uh, the yellow one is the middle sensor. Uh, right. Before we go into it, let's explain what the all sensors are. I think that's the easiest way, because it's a bit confusing. Three hall sensors here. One, two, and three. Now your controller uses the hall sensors to detect the rotation of the motor, whether it's spinning that way, whether it's spinning that way, also the speed. It does that by every time this motor rotates inside the wheel. Let me change the camera angle. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit this under here, thinking about it. But we'll give it a go. Every time this motor rotates around the wheel, it passes one of these magnets. Now these are bipolar hall sensors. What that means is we've got a south pole magnet. Um, we'll call them plus and minuses. We've got a plus, a minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. What happens when the sensor passes the plus? It turns on. It gives your controller 5 volts. Then you know your controller, your sensor's working. Everything's fine. Um, and then when it gets to the next magnet, the sensor turns off. Again, lets your controller know the speed and the rotation. Um, whether it's going forwards or backwards, etc. So each time a sensor passes, in effect, it's going on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, all the way around. Three sensors need to do that to synchronize to get the power from the phases um, going right through the controller. There's a long explanation about it, but that's the short. So these sensors uh, basically switches on, off. Every time they pass a magnet, they flick themselves on and off. That's the basic way of putting them. Let's change the camera back a second. Now the way these work, they've got three legs. There's a plus, a minus, and uh, what they call it, pin out on the paper I'm about to show you. Um, you can just call it a return line to the controller, uh, wherever you want to call it. That's the third leg, signal return. Uh, let me show you on a diagram a second, while I try and get my head straight. Just going to pull up a whole sensor. Yeah, this is the type of motor we're repairing. Doesn't matter what brand it is, as long as it's direct drive like this one here. This is the way to go about it. Whole sensors. As you can see, we've got five volts in coming from the controller, a ground, which is a middle leg, and the out. Called pin out, out, sense out, return. It's called many things, but that's the way they work, basically. Um... Quick note, there are two types of sensors fitted to most e-bikes and scooters. Uh, one is called a bipolar or a switching sensor. Um, that works how I just explained. Every time it passes a plus or minus magnet, it turns itself on and off. Uh, the other one is called a linear hole sensor, which is commonly found in throttles. Um, that detects the uh, magnetic field in relation to the distance of the sensor, blah, blah, blah. Basically, as you apply pressure to the throttle, the magnet gets close to the sensor, which slowly increases the voltage back through that sensor line. We're not dealing with them today. I'll do a throttle replacement sometime. It's cheap and cheerful. But these are switching hole sensors or bipolar hole sensors. 
Um, we'll go through the models, etc. But pretty much any bipolar hall sensor will do in these hubs. Also for pass sensors, but pass sensors are so cheap, there's no point swapping them out. Dun dun dun. So we'll go back in. First things first, we've all seen this, except this is terrible. Usually this is connected to a nice white block at the end that you plug your motor into. There's your three phases. This has been put on a is this model connector. It's not the XT, is it an MT? I don't know, someone correct me in the comments if you can. Either way, there's your green, blue and yellow phase wires. And this is your usual sense wire. Uh, your whole sensor wire, sorry. Black and red is 5 volts coming from the controller on that big plastic 6 connector block. Only 5 are used, except sometimes there's a white, I digress. So that's giving 5 volts basically to them whole sensors. Every time they get turned on and off, each one of these lines is sending a signal back to the controller to say, I'm working, uh, let's go. Some controllers require whole sensors, some don't. Difference is sine wave and square wave. There's a lot to go into when it comes to these, but feel free to ask questions. But as it stands now, we're swapping out a whole sensor. The switch is on and off every time it passes a magnet of opposite polarity. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, first thing to check, obviously, when you're checking if the whole sensors are working, is are you getting continuity or any signal at all coming from each one of these lines to the main head of the pin? Now these hole sensors have been jumped directly into the motor, there's no hole sensor board. Um, it works, not ideal, but yeah, either way it works. Usually there's a nice green board um, and your hole sensors are mounted and you can desolder them on there, etc. So let me just see and we'll make sure we're on the right line a second. What I'm going to do is put the multimeter into continuity mode. Make sure it's actually working. Sanity check. Check the yellow. Find my pin here. Should be one of these. Might have to cut back to find out. Okay. Let's cut this back a second and go into it. Uh, these are just heat shrinked. The legs are bent directly there. All we're going to do is whip the sensor out. I'll show you how to do that safely. Because sometimes you can mess the motor up if you do it wrong. Where's this yellow? What I'm looking for is the yellow leg of this sensor. Because I know it's the yellow that's damaged from when I tested it on the vehicle. Let me get my snips out. Remove this cable tie. Give me some space. Like that. Make sure you leave nothing behind and nothing falls in. Uh, obviously, this is going to be rotating when it's back on the bike. The last thing you want to do is find stragglers inside the motor. Which one is yellow? None of them so far. I'm going to have to remove the sheath in. And some more. Right. So a bit better. I'll change the camera when it comes time to soldering. We need to trace our yellow one. Uh, that was the one that's failed. So I'll pop this yellow wire out. It is, as I wiggle, middle sensor as I thought, and is the last leg. I could check by checking the rotation, blah, 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 but that's not gonna help you. So what we're gonna do is whip it out and then check the rotation. So let's find the yellow, make sure we're still on continuity. And track this leg down. Still can't get to it though. What I'll do is just remove some of this heat wrap. Very carefully. You don't want to be scratching up the copper at all. Uh, it's actually varnished to protect it. Um, and also to stop continuity from each phase. Right, that's enough. Mm. 
Right, so the cable from the whole sensor block running all the way through, even though it's damaged pretty bad in places, customer doesn't want it repaired and they don't want to incur the cost, so it is what it is. I'll patch up best I can. Um, I don't agree with it, by all means I'd rather do it all once first time, um, but they've on a minimal budget, so... So now I know it's continuity anyway throughout the cable, so I know it's worth me swapping the sensor. I knew that anyway, but it's worth double checking just in case you go through all this to find out that there's a break further on down the line. Right, so first things first. I need room to work. So we're confident it's this middle sensor. What we need to do is to cut it out first, these three legs, but leave ourselves enough room to work with. <laughs> the best way to do that is just to take one, two, and three. And then I'll just pause a second, re angle this motor so you can actually see the whole sensor on this side. Right, so that's pretty much where we're at. I had to get that rotated off camera in case anything started shaking. So let me use the tip of my soldering iron a second. We've got one, two, three. We've cut the three legs on the faulty sensor. It was receiving five volts, tested through the line. Nothing was coming back when you rotated the motor. Um, unlike the other two sensors, when you rotate the motor, the signal goes from zero volts from the last leg to uh, 4.8 volts roughly give or take but the point is it turns on and off every time there's a rotation past the magnet so we've cut our three legs we've got to remove this now there's a little caveat to be aware of as you can see this ring is made up of individual strips and then compressed down basically to make this is this an armature commuter what would you call this this is a commuter no armature different terms not sure anyway this is how it's made basically. So if I go hitting this now to get this out, these plates will separate. As you can see here, these have started to separate. I've seen people do some serious damage knocking them out trying to get these ones out. Because what they tend to do is come and do the inside with a screwdriver or something. Because these won't pull out. And they tap it and they fray all this. There's a way of getting these ones out nicely. But luckily enough it's the middle sensor. Which in most cases the same in most motors. And we can get rid of this in a nice cheeky way. We're going to get a flat edge screwdriver. Just line it up. And give the back end a nice light tap. No need to go heavy. It will move. And looking at the sensor, it looks like it had water damage, to be honest. I think I've gone overkill with a screwdriver. Let's find out. Slight noise. Out, done. Didn't need to tap too hard, but there you go. Anyway, that one's out, it was rested in, where'd he go? He legged it, no he didn't, there he is. So here's the sensor. That was this orientation, which is important, I'll show you why now. It was orientated like that. Right, On this is, when you take the sensor out, Check which orientation, what I mean by that. Is this going to zoom in? Yeah, just about. The sensor, if you look, is shaped. There's a flat back edge, which is this side. And the front side is beveled like one side of a 20, 50 pence piece. Uh, get that back in. Um, the part with the actual sensor is the part that's beveled. Um, so that's the part that usually, in most cases, faces the magnets. The only exception to this I've noticed is so far Kaboom Mantis motors, um, the 800 watt versions. The middle sensor is orientated with the backside facing the magnets. So if I was to demonstrate on this one, this one came out like this. The bevel is my thumb. That's how this one came out, with the bevel facing the magnet. Now on a Kaboom Mantis 800 watt motor, and there are a few others, uh, this middle um, sensor especially is positioned with the back half 
towards the magnets. I hope that makes sense. But in most cases, the beveled edge at the front is the sensor. Um, and on most spec sheets you look at, should be able to pull up a better picture with the bevel. Uh, they demonstrated with these sides here, there's the beveled front. Um, I think that demonstrates enough to be honest. So yeah, that's just something to watch out for. Um, it's mainly in the ones with the white uh, green boards that's printed there sometimes. And um, because the circuitry on the actual board, the way the PCB traces are laid out, um, they account for the rotation of the sensor and they swap the pin power accordingly. Anyway, just keep an eye out. Old ones out. New sensors. Um, these are off Amazon. A uh, pack of 40, 9.99. Um, they're generic bipolar. I'm not sure. I think these are Honeywell, um, but they are bipolar stroke switching sensors, and this is just going to go straight back in that gap. Obviously, we're going to suit it up, put some heat shrink on the legs, cut it to length, sort out our cables on this side, ready so we can solder it straight onto, etc. First thing we need to do is make sure where we've took out that sensor, there's a nice clear gap. There's nothing loose. The sensor was held on by a bit of adhesive, it looks like. There's our wires ready for our new one. There's nothing special there. So with the bevel facing outwards towards the motor, uh, towards the magnets, that should just slot in nicely. He says. There you go. It did. Let's get that back there. All right. So there's a new sensor in its place. Yeah. Oh, tell you what, I gotta come up with a jig if I'm gonna be doing this constantly. But there's a new sensor in place. Um, let's cut some heat shrink back first so we can seal it up a bit. Put that by there. <sighs> um, so yeah, most of the time on your LCDs it shows error eight, error three on KT controllers, um, error seven on TF one hundred displays, LTO ones, SQOSs, anything that's on a scooter that's the display for that. That's the error code they'll show anyway when your whole sensor need replacing in effect. So let's cut these to the right length. I'm gonna go that, I think. One, two and three. Let's just make sure the actual um, pins of the sensor don't make contact with each other over time, I suppose. Um, you can lay it down if you've got a steady hand and make sure they're not making contact, slap them together, put some conformal coating on, um, some epoxy, if you was at a push, I suppose. Right. So we're sealed up there, up until that point. So let's rotate the motor back round. Let's see if I can get that in a position. Right, I'll bend these over now, but these are our legs. What I need to do is put something underneath the sensor as I bend it to get a good bend and not just flex in the actual pin. Uh, otherwise it just leaves tension on that pin constantly um, which is not good really it just naturally wants to come away from the pin forever so it's best to get that tension out so I'll just put something underneath the actual pin like that and then I'll bend it over the actual head of this so There you go, there's one. Two or three. 
So we've got them in, we'll shrink the heat shrink down. We've got a bend on the pins so they're not flexing. And uh, now we just need to dress the wires on the other side. I'm going to zoom back out a minute because trying to cover this camera angle when it's zoomed in is a nightmare. Yeah, I hope that's been recorded. In. Let's just pop back up there in a second. Right. What we got? We got one. We got our plus or our VCC, whatever you want to call it. If it's coming from the controller and you've actually seen the markings on the controller board, it's marked as VCC. Uh, we've got our ground on the board, it's marked as GND. This is just in case you ever want to run a manual cable. Done that a few times. And our yellow is over here. So let's just start trimming these up a bit. Let's see what's under them. Okay, that's a nice pin. Uh, what I'll do is go over the top of these with large heat shrink. Um, and now let me pull it back over after I've soldered the legs onto these. If this is ever going to come off. One, two, and where's the last one? Where'd our ground go? There he is. Come on, there you go. Right, one, two, and three. Let's get some heat shrink. Um, I have to go with red. Just the next size up is what it is. And what I'll do is I'll stick this on these legs. Um, simple reason is when I solder these to the actual pins they're going on. I can sort of drag the heat shrink back over and seal up these tips as well. So that'll be nice. So one, two, and three. I'm going to turn the solder line on. Right. Now I've mixed these wires up on purpose, yellow, black and red. Uh, simple reason is just so we can just have a quick look at this again. Now if we take our bevel into account, we pull another center out. If we take the bevel into account, uh, which is my thumb side, um, we can look at the diagram and work out that the first leg that one would be our voltage in the middle leg would be our ground and the last leg would be our out so if we didn't know which way them wires went because we just cut them loose like that we can drop this sensor in its correct orientation and work out from there where the wires go hope that makes sense so yeah there's the bevel on this side, which means our first leg would be our, I just keep doing this, voltage in, middle is ground, and there's our signal return back to our controller. It's the same in most sensors. I have come across one that was different. I can't remember what I used it for, but there was one that was different. So we can just use our mock-up we done then. And obviously this leg, furthest leg over, yep. First leg is our volt, uh, sorry, if we'll go from this side, that would be our five volts. The middle would be our ground, and the last leg would be our yellow wire, which is our signal return or pin out. Oh dear, it's getting late. I'm going to tin these up a little bit. Just going to make it easier in a second. When it comes to these sensors, you don't want to be soldering them for um, a period of time. The soldering line you want on and off as quick as you can. They are temperature sensitive. Um, they overheat a lot inside these motors. So the last thing you want to do is be hanging around with a solder and iron on top of the actual pins. So they're tinned. So 
They attend. Which one's first? Let's go with the red. Let's see if I can get that zoomed in a bit a second. Maybe. Let's go with the red to the first leg. We're literally going on and off. Uh, there's no need to hang around. They're both pre tinned so when it comes to printing together, it should just be that. And that's that one. What I'm going to do is pull the heat shrink back over it. It's just fiddly more than anything. I'm going to shrink down the heat shrink on the first leg just by using a solid iron tip. Um, I don't have to actually touch it, just hold it close. It's close enough to shrink it down. I'll do enough to sneak that over the top. Then I'll shrink the red down, I just put it on. Again, just sticking the soldering iron on it alone uh, is enough. Then I'll sit it down somewhere nice. I'm going to heat it down a bit more in a second, but you get the basic idea. So that's the red one done. Ground is the middle. So I'll just line that up. The middle one done. Do exactly the same again with the heat shrink. Move on to the yellow. And jobs are good. Doesn't help when you've got sausage fingers. This heat shrink malarkey is a nightmare. Well, I might do a second, just pause it, get all this heat shrinked up and come back in. Bear with me a second. All right, so they're buttoned back up. Let's move the soldering out for a second. Zoom back out. Where we to? Do, 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 do. We end up with something that looks like that. New sensor back in, all sealed up. I'm going to throw. Uh, cable tie back by there again, keep everything secured because bearing in mind this is going to be rotating, obviously. Um, so you don't want nothing loose inside, everything needs to be secured down. Um, blah, epoxy and glue. Now, I could epoxy the back of these onto there. Um, the manufacturer hasn't, they've relied on well, they put a bit of glue there. Um, to be honest, it looks like heat glue. I might put a bit of I don't know. UV curing resin on there, just a quick dab, maybe, maybe, yeah, I'll put a bit of UV resin on there, um, and that's pretty much a whole sense of swap out, uh, don't get me wrong, this motor, if I had the option, would need much more work, the cable needs replacing, clearly, um, there's no doubt about that, customers on an £80 budget, which covers the repair of the motor, the rewire of the wire room has been cut. The pins are all shot. And what else? Uh, controller rewire as well. It's a budget of £80. So I quoted him. What did I quote him for the motor fully? For the motor, I quoted him £49.99 to swap the cable, three hole sensors, take the bearings out, put new bearings in. He declined, just wanted one hole sensor. So there you go. One hole sensor replaced. Um, stick this back together shortly. And that's that. Um, so it's pretty much something you could do at home. If you don't fancy it, numbers down below. 
Um, just drop me a message. I can maybe help you through it. If not, maybe I could do it for you. Either way, I'll throw another video up the next time one comes in, which is basically tomorrow. Um, I think I got two Kaboo. No, two Kaboo Tech Life X7 scooters to do. Two motors off that or one motor. So yeah, it's pretty busy. And there's about eight bikes still to repair. So yeah, hope this helps somebody. Um, any questions, just leave them in the comments, guys. Please click, click the subscribe button as well, because yeah, that's killing the algorithm for me. In all fairness, never knew what I meant, but I do now. Right, nice one. Take it easy.